Political involvement, mafia, drug scandals, and shady business practice were few things that made UFC a monopoly. Once this close to bankruptcy, to now being a business worth over $12 billion, hosting events all over the globe, have an average sale of pay-per-views of half a million, making billion dollar deals and having fighters that are world superstar. Is Dana White a genius who created a monopoly in the sports business or a delusional guy who believed 20 years ago that UFC could be bigger than football? There are discussions about who is the GOAT of UFC. John Jones, Khabib, George St. Pierre, but the true GOAT is Dana White. Many people believe that Dana started UFC, but that's not true. In 1993, Royan Gracie and Art Davy came up with the idea for a tournament to see which martial arts is the best. They went to HBO and Showtime with their idea, but they rejected them. So they met up with Bob Merowitz of Semaphore Entertainment and created the Ultimate Fighting Championship, for short UFC. Group met up with John Millis, a film director and screenwriter who came up with the idea of the legendary octagon. Daniel Colorado, November 12, 1993. UFC 1 took place. UFC 1 had karate, kickbox, sumo, jiu-jitsu, taekwondo, and shoot fighting. Only rules were... Actually, there were no rules, except no ice thing, bite, put anything in the mouth, and fighting with footwear. The night was a success. 7,000 spectators, 86,000 pay-per-views. Winner got $50,000. Not so far, there was a kid who worked as a bellhop. He made good money, but he had enough. He wanted to go in the fighting business, so he quit and became a boxing coach. The kid's name is Dana White. One night at a bar, Dana got a threat from James Whitey Bulger guys. Whitey was an inspiration for Jack Nicholson character in The Parted, and Johnny Depp played him in Black Mass. These guys told Dana that if he doesn't pay them $250, he knows what's coming. What did Dana do? buy one-way ticket to Vegas. In Vegas, Dana had a friend, Lorenzo Fertitta, who was with his brother Frank in the casino business. Lorenzo and Dana went to an UFC event and they talked about the cons of the event and how they can improve it. Dana also managed two fighters in UFC, Chuck Little and Tito Ortiz. UFC was in money troubles at that time. David and Gracie left the company to Bob. With that came contract problems with Tito. So Dana met with Bob to discuss. And Bob basically told him that there is no money and that he doesn't know if there will be any more money to run the events. Dana immediately called Lorenzo and suggested that they buy UFC. Lorenzo agreed. Bob wanted $1 million for 50% and Lorenzo won it all. So a deal was struck, $2 million for UFC. Dana got 10%. What they got is only the logo. The previous owners sold merch rights, media rights, and domain because they ran out of money. Yeah, UFC.com was for user-friendly computers, but that was nothing. They had much bigger problems. See, Senator John McCain called the UFC a human cockfight because there were no rules and regulations. That led UFC being banned in the whole US. What now? No pay-per-view, no venues, hard to get sponsors because nobody wants to be associated with a brutal sport that has no rules. And in Japan, there was an organization named Pride who had the best fighters in the world. Dana managed to get a team and worked with Athletic Commission to establish rules that will get the sport unbanned. But they still burned $44 million in a few years. That made Fertitta Bros angry. I mean, who wouldn't be? And they asked Dana for how much he can sell UFC. He told them 5 million. That would be a multi-million dollar loss. So they decided to give it one more chance and created a reality TV show. They couldn't find a TV network, so they managed to make a deal with Spike. But they didn't want to pay them. So UFC paid $10 million for production for the show, The Ultimate Fighter. The show was about 16 fighters living and training under the same roof. Two teams, each team trained by one UFC fighter. Winner gets a six-figure contract with UFC. First episode, 1 million views, but still no second season. No second season, UFC goes on the market. Final match, Forrest Griffin versus Stefan Bonar, 10 million views. Both got a contract and a second season deal was made on a napkin. The UFC was saved and they managed to produce more reality TV shows. That was over a long time ago. A lot has changed for UFC. Firstly, it isn't banned in most states, so better deals came. One of the deals was in 2011 with Fox. 
Fox offered them four fights per year on the Fox network. Fox paid UFC $100 million annually. After Fox came a better deal. See, at the time of the Fox deal, ESPN didn't want to make a deal with UFC because John Skipper, the president of ESPN, didn't like UFC. Luckily, after the Fox deal ended, John stepped down as president because his dealer said something about him using white powder. After that, in 2018, UFC made a deal with ESPN. Five-year deal, 43 fights per year for $1.5 billion. Pay-per-view is their biggest source of revenue. As high-profile events sold over a million pay-per-views and they usually sell about 500,000. After that is media rights that UFC sells, like this ESPN deal. And lastly, UFC Fighter Pass that costs $9.99, which gives you a special UFC content. Speaking on Fighter Pass, it's really expensive to be an UFC fan. So the pass is $9.99 a month. ESPN Plus is $5.99 a month. UFC Pay-Per-View $69.99. Let's say you buy 16 of them, that's $1239.60 per year. And we didn't even talk about ticket sale. Usually the ticket prices are... I found out that the average price is from $65 to $500. High profile fights such as Conor vs. Cowboy UFC 246 was $300 to $15,000. But for this fight, UFC 292 Sterling vs. O'Malley, the cheapest was $314 and the most expensive over $8,000. But hey, if you love something, you don't ask for the price. They also have tons of sponsors who pay them millions. Like Harley Davidson, Monster, Doritos, and Lately Prime. One of the controversial ones is in 2014, the six-year Reebok deal worth $70 million, which made fighters not be able to use their own sponsors on clothing, which made fighters make less money. Fighters make not so much money. UFC makes billions in revenue and only pays 16% of that to their fighters. NBA pays 51%, NFL 48%, MLB 51%. Dana says that the pay will grow as the business and the revenue grows, but that is not what it looks like. Look at this graph. UFC from 2012 to 2020 didn't raise fighter pay much. Compared to boxing, High-profile boxing fights make boxers hundreds of millions of dollars, while high-profile UFC fights made just millions. That's because in boxing there are a lot of promotion, so there is a competition and boxers can negotiate their pay with them. In MMA in the Western Hemisphere, there is only UFC, but they can do that because they are a monopoly. There are a lot of political and legal debates that UFC is a monopoly. In short, lawsuits. It's said that in the Western Hemisphere, UFC controls 80 to 90% of the market. They are East and West. So what about the Eastern Hemisphere? Well, there is said that one championship owns 90% of the market. So UFC is just a monopoly on the West, not globally. Well, not quite. See, one championship reported losses of hundreds of millions of dollars each year. So UFC has no competition they can buy them or they can make them run out of business. That's what they did. Remember Pride, the biggest UFC competition in Japan? There were rumors that Yakuza, the Japanese mafia, is involved in Pride to launder money by gambling on fighters and fixing fights. No TV channel wanted to do business with them, so Pride went bankrupt. Then stepped in UFC and bought Pride's content and fighters. They also bought Strikeforce, World Fighting Alliance, International Fighting League, and World Extreme Cage Fighting. That's why they have no competition. Would you rather buy some random pay-per-view or watch the best fighters in the world fight? When you think of MMA, you think about UFC. When you said that you watched MMA match, you most likely watched a UFC match. There is Bellator, one championship, but UFC became industry standard. Even if UFC wants to buy them or make them run out of business, they can't because UFC will then, without a doubt, be considered a monopoly and will face harsh legal consequences. So we will see how that goes. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in business content and business stories, please consider subscribing. Also, follow me on Twitter or X, however you want it. I post business content there also.